I'm Ben, I'm 12 years old, and I'm a super fan... Super fan! Super fan! ..of David Williams. I like drawing, I like singing, I like cats. <laughs> and my favourite author is the wonderful David Williams. <laughs> His books always make me feel a different array of emotions. I always feel very enjoyed and giggly and sometimes sad, sometimes happy, sometimes lost, sometimes really excited. And it's always sad when I get to the end of his books because then I don't have nothing to read. <laughs> I wrote to David Williams in research for a school project and I got the letter back while I was on the trampoline. And I went inside and I read it and then I went back outside and I did the most flips I've ever done in my life. <laughs> David Williams has also inspired me to become an author slash illustrator and to write children's books as well. I'm really nervous and excited to meet David Williams because I have so many different questions and different things I want to know and I'm very excited. <laughs> When I woke up, I, I just woke up and I was like, I'm reading David Williams today. Not many people do get to meet their hero, so I'm very lucky and... Oof. Okay, I think this is it. Wish me luck. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Nice to meet you. Don't you too. So you're my fan? Yes. My one fan? <laughs> Thank goodness, I've got one. <laughs> so you've got some questions for me, is that right? Yes, I do have a few And you've read all my books? Yes. Right, OK. <laughs> what was your favourite? The Boy in the Dress. OK, and what was your least favourite? There isn't one. <laughs> They're all brilliant. That's yeah. the one here. OK, all right. I'm ready for your questions. Okay. I'm very excited at what you're going to ask me. I'm 12 and like to read a lot. Did you read a lot when you were my age? I think when I was your age, I probably was reading, but before then, I was a bit of a reluctant reader until I found a book that I really loved, and that was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And that was a book I read for myself for pleasure, because, of course, there's, there's books that grown-ups tell you to, to read, aren't they, you know, at school, or maybe your parents tell you to read certain books. But it's great to find books that you love and you just want to read yourself. What about you? What was your first book that you really loved? Probably the BFG. Good choice. Good choice. What did you want to be when you grew up? Well, I don't think I have grown up yet. I'm still quite childish. Uh, well, when I was younger, really young, I wanted to be either James Bond, so I wanted to be a spy, or Sherlock Holmes, detective, or I just wanted to be Tarzan and just run around everywhere in my pants. <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> the last one I didn't do. But um, by the time I was 12, I was pretty much into acting and doing comedy. And because comedians generally write their own jokes, that actually got me into writing. So I started writing like comedy sketches and things to perform in school. And, and then from that, I ended up writing books. Who was the biggest influence on your books? I think the biggest influence is probably Roald Dahl because he's the writer I really loved. Uh, growing up and also I read his books regularly uh, now and I think what he does brilliantly is he'll take something quite scary and he'll make it funny too. And they could create a character like Miss Trunchbull. Have you read Matilda? Yeah. I mean, it's brilliant that she picks up girls by their pigtails, spins them round and throws them out of the window of the classroom, <laughs> which for me is very funny, even though it's cruel. Um, and so he does those kind of things brilliantly. He balances the, the humour and the darkness. So that's something I try and do in my books. It's no harm in reading other people's books that you like and, and being influenced by them in some way. Would you like to be a writer when you're older? Yes, and an illustrator as well. Well, this is great because there are people who do both brilliantly. So if you can do both, I can't draw at all. <laughs> if you could tell your younger writing self anything, what would it be? I'd say follow your instincts. You know, what, what's your heart and your mind is telling you to, to do things a certain way. You're not always going to be right, but it's worth following those instincts because you can't really second guess what other people are going to want to read. I mean, here I am in Australia, and you're saying you really like The Boy in the Dress. Well, how did I know you were ever going to read that book? How did I know you would take that to heart? I mean, I had no idea. So I was writing really a story that I thought I would have liked to have re uh, read myself. And I think that's what you need to do as a writer, is write, write something that you would like to read. 
So what is it about the boy in the dress that you like the most? Well, it relates heavily to me. OK. Because when I was young, my sisters used to dress me up in dresses. Snap. Well, I've got an older sister. I know. Two years older, and she used to dress me up. We'd have a dressing up box. I'd have a, a mauve bridesmaid's dress, a fur hat, a little handbag, and she would dress me up and parade me up and down the street where we lived. The last time was about two or three years ago. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? It's fun, it's fun to be someone else for a bit. Where is the most unusual place you came up with an idea for a book? Well, I think probably on the loo. There's not much to do, is there? You're just waiting, really, aren't you? And so it's often quite a good, a good place to, to come up with ideas. And then you've got paper there, you can write, write the ideas on. <laughs> do you have any advice for me? I have some advice for you. I say when it gets colder, you really need to wear long trousers <laughs> and maybe not a singlet. OK? <laughs> Don't forget to wear a coat someday. Um, what advice I would give you? Well, what's wonderful is you already know what you like to do. You said you like to write and illustrate your own books. There's nothing stopping you. The way you get good at something is to do it over and over again. If you don't want creating little stories, do it for your own sense of fun in your own spare time. And that's how people get really good at something. I've written a short poem for you. Would you like to read it? Mm, let me think. Mm. Yes, all right then, yes. It's called The Walliam Shop. He opens up at half past eight and lures kids in with marshmallow bait and ice creams that are out of date. Raj opens up a bonbon crate that turns his sign to the open slate and kids start entering at an alarming rate. Ben walks in rather meekly, looking for his plumbing weekly. Alfie walks in and says hi to Raj, then grabs a packet of lollies, large. And as my rhymes come to a stop, Dennis in a dress struts into the shop. I love it. It's brilliant. And the illustration is fantastic as well. This is great. Can I keep this? Sure. Can I put this in my book and pass it off as my own and not give you any money? No. Oh. <laughs> hmm, that's a shame. That's great. I love that. We you really can do both brilliantly. Thank you so much for listening to my questions and talking to me. Oh, Ben, I loved it. Put it there. Yes. Thank you very much. I love this, and I'm going to treasure this, so thank you very much. And remember, follow your dream, OK? You're going to promise me that? Yep. OK, thank you. It was extremely fun meeting David Williams, and he was like, very nice and very kind and extremely funny. He gave me lots of good advice, telling me to always follow your dreams, and when you get a dream, do it as much as possible. I was really nervous that he wouldn't like the poem or that he that he thought it wouldn't be long enough or something like that, but he really liked it and he even wanted to keep it. After I finished asking him questions, then we did a little skit together of a gangster granny scene. Are you okay, Gran? Oh, yes, yes, oh, I'm fine, thank you. I, I was just having a little nana nap. Come in, come in. It's the crown jewels. What's the crown jewels? The ones you never managed to steal. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. They are the most valuable jewels in the world, but stealing from the Queen, she looks like such a nice lady. She's got loads of jewels, and I can help you. Help me do what? Steal the crown jewels. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. <laughs> Very good. I mean, if we don't get Oscars for that, there is no justice. Not many people do get to act with David Williams, except for famous actors. And it was really nice, and it's like a dream come true. My final message to David Williams is to always keep doing what you're doing, because kids love it, and so do adults. And I'm even more of a super fan now than I was before.